Hello, this is Mr. Zanaletto again. Um, we're going to cover con um, proofs involving congruent triangles. Um, my first thing I'd like to point out is whatever, whenever we're doing this, we're going to always want to first mark all of our given information. Then we look for vertical angles, and the reason would be vertical angle theorem. We could mark any shared sides or angles where the reason there would be reflexive property of congruency. Once we have all those marked, we're hoping at that point we should have one of these three theorems or postulates that will prove triangles to be congruent, either through side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg. Um, you may want to take a look at some of the notes I've made here, just um, if, you're, if you're unfamiliar with this, but you really should be in pretty good shape. Um, we've covered this in class with regards to um, those five theorems and postulates. Um, from here, we want to go ahead and prove triangles congruent, given some information. So like I said before, we're going to go ahead and you write out our given information. That being, in this case, angle A, X, W is congruent to angle VWX. And that is not marked here, so we have to make sure we mark that AXW, VWX. And those are going to be congruent. Um, they also told us that AX was congruent to VW. And in that case, that already was marked, so we had to mark that. It has been done for us. From there, we want to look for vertical angles, none there. Shared sides or angles, hey, we do have a shared side, so we go ahead and mark that. WX is congruent to WX. That's going to be congruent. I mark it here as well as put here and tell the reason why. Why? Because it's reflexive property of congruence. And then from there, we have side, angle, side, side, angle, side. That's going to be our reason why the two triangles are congruent. Triangle A, X, W, congruent to triangle V, W, X. And we're good to go. So that's, that's the first one that I was going to show you. The next one, we're going to use the same process. We have given information. Let's make sure we're all squared away here. Okay, number one. I'm going to say RQ, and here we didn't, weren't given numbers, but that's okay. Sometimes I like it better that way anyway, because some people will use more steps than others, and it's not wrong or right, more wrong or more right. It's just simply a different way to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and list all these. QE is congruent to ED. That's already marked, but the RQ and CD were not marked. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those. And then I'm going to say measure of angle CED is equal to 90 degrees. And that all was given information. Once I have that, now I'm going to want to go ahead and get the CED. We have vertical angles, and we can go ahead and name those. It was vertical angles, um, angle CED is going to be congruent. Vertical angle theorem gives us congruency, CED congruent to REQ both being angles, of course. And those are congruent by vertical angle theorem. Now that vertical angle theorem, by definition of congruence, we could say that measures are going to be equal. And the reason why I do that is that allows me then to go ahead and use um, reflexive, um, not reflexive property, transitive property to state that REQ is going to have the same measure. So there I have the definition of congruence. And I go, ahead, go on to say now that the measure of angle REQ equals 90 degrees. I can mark it there, and I can go ahead and say that's true by transitive property of equality. Now that I have this 90 degrees and this 90 degrees, now we know we have 90 degree triangles. And by having 90 degree triangles, we can use hypotenuse leg, because we have the hypotenuse, both hypotenuse are congruent and one pair of legs are congruent. So 
hypotenuse leg will go ahead and let us finish up this proof by saying triangle REQ is in fact congruent to triangle CED. So those are our two proofs. One of the more common mistakes with any proof is you assume what you're trying to prove. Don't do that. Um, in this situation, we had to use definition of congruency because we had a congruency statement and then we wanted to start talking about the actual angle measure so that we'd have two right triangles. So this would be truly the, um, I think the best way to prove that. There's always, usually, often in a couple ways. But anyway, at this point, um, that's about all I have. So make sure that you're realizing that you want to do these steps first. And once you do those steps, you should be able to piece together any other information from the picture and get to the point where you're going to use one of those five postulates or theorems. Thank you, and I hope that helps you prove congruent triangles.